The Lean Startup by Eric Ries. The Lean Startup by Eric Ries teaches founders how to build a low risk startup and create products customers will love. The Lean Startup applies the scientific method to building a business. Unlike traditional businesses, this means embracing testing, failure, and change. The core of the Lean Startup is the minimum viable product, MVP, the leanest version of the product that you can create that a customer is willing to pay for. Eric Ries starts with the statement that entrepreneurs are everywhere. Regardless of industry, company size, or your role, entrepreneurs are everywhere. You don't necessarily have to be a founder to apply entrepreneurship, which is good news. Thanks to the internet, it's easier than ever to become an entrepreneur. However, that means more ideas, more products, more choices, more noise. More people are going to waste a lot of time and money building things nobody wants. So, enter the Lean Startup. The Lean Startup applies the scientific method to building a business. Reese provides a framework for founders to understand how to start a business, how to develop products customers love, and how to grow that business long term. The three foundations of the Lean Startup are 1. Find a business model through validated learning 2. Constantly split test your product and 3. Scale your business using the right metrics and avoiding waste. How to find your business model through validated learning As Rhys says, the only way to win is to learn faster than anyone else. Think about this in the context of Facebook or Google. Neither were the first to market. Facebook grew in the shadow of MySpace, but its lean startup approach to constantly learning enabled it to finally outmaneuver MySpace. The same is true of Google. There were many search engines before it, but Google learned what customers wanted, and importantly, did not want. Lean Startup introduces the concepts of validated learning and build, measure, learn feedback loops. It seeks to answer the question, how can we build a sustainable business around a new set of products or services? While that may not sound groundbreaking, it's often overlooked by startup founders. Focus on creating products that people actually want. The question to ask is never, can it be built? But instead, should it be built? And founders need to do this in the lowest risk way to enable you to move with speed. This is expressed through the building of an MVP, minimum viable product. The MVP is the leanest possible version of the product that a customer is willing to pay for. We'll talk about that more in a minute. How to constantly split test. Startups exist not to make staff make money or serve customers. They exist to learn how to build a sustainable business. That means until you have a paying customer, you don't have a business. So, startups need to adapt and learn fast. They need to change. The product is the end result of strategy. Products change constantly, called engine tuning. Once the MVP is established, a startup can also work on tuning the engine. This will involve measurement and learning. Strategy changes occasionally. This is called a pivot. And vision rarely changes. In order to change, failure must be an option and failure while learning must be accepted within the organization. If you cannot fail, then you cannot succeed. Lean startups must embrace failure as part of the process. In the beginning, everything is an assumption. Bringing the scientific method to learning about your startup means you need to start writing hypotheses. Everything you plan and produce is an assumption which needs to be tested. The MVP is a test. The minimum viable product lacks many features that may prove essential later on. Even a low quality MVP can act in service of building a great high quality product. Yes, MVPs sometimes are perceived as low quality by customers. If so, we should use this as an opportunity to learn what attributes customers really care about. It helps entrepreneurs to start the process of learning as quickly as possible. While you learn and change the product as fast as feasible, you should maintain the product vision. So, let's say you want to provide an app to help cyclists connect socially. You may find that your app is better aimed at elites rather than Sunday cyclists, or women rather than everybody. Or you may find that people want to use it for dating or arranging races. But the core proposition, help cyclists connect socially, should remain the same. Finally, after all that data collection, you still must get extensive contact with potential customers to understand them. 
It's unacceptable to take anything for granted or to rely solely on the reports of others. You've got to get outside the building. So let's have a look at where the Lean Startup works and fails. The Lean Startup is a seminal work shaping many aligned books for lifestyle entrepreneurs, including the 4-Hour Work Week, the 7-Day Startup, and the $100 Startup. I think where the Lean Startup hands over the baton is at the point of testing versus launching. In the 7-Day Startup, for example, Dan Norris talks of the difference between the entrepreneur and the entrepreneur. The entrepreneur does what's necessary to get customers. This is in the true spirit of the Lean Startup. The entrepreneur, however, does what's comfortable. While testing can be helpful, this comfortable activity can also be a distraction, if overdone. There comes a point when an entrepreneur simply has to launch the product and get it into the hands of a paying customer. Paying is key here because customers don't know what they want until they open their wallets. That means testing your hypothesis on prospects without asking them to buy, even if it's for $1, produces a very different result to how your product will perform in the wild. In summary, I think the Lean Startup must be credited for helping shape a movement and for giving lifestyle entrepreneurs a base to grow. It's a must read if only to learn what these commonly used concepts are and where they come from, e.g. MVP, split testing, idea validation, etc., However, as with many seminal works, they get adapted and modified for different applications, even brought up to date. This is where we are now with the $100 startup, the seven-day startup, and the four-hour work week. This is Upschool Book Reviews. My name's Graham Brown. If you like these summaries that I'm providing on books for lifestyle entrepreneurs, then go and check out my free course, upschoolbookreviews.com slash course. You can complete that course in an hour, and in that hour, you can learn about the five books that I feel will help you become a better lifestyle entrepreneur for free. My name is Graham Brown, upschoolbookreviews.com slash course.